Hi YouTubers and gamers, and no, um, this is a bit of a different view to what you normally see. Um, before I actually show you the game room, I thought I'd just show you the main living area and the modern game setup I've got. So obviously I've got the big, um, I think it's, what is that, uh, I think it's 48 inch, yeah I think this is for a 48 inch TV, not the biggest of TVs, but it's a good Sony Bravia LCD with an analog tuner and everything from well, it must be about 12 years old, this TV. It was a £2,000 telly when it first came out. But it's still a bloody good TV and still working, so no need to up upgrade, really, because 4K, uh, I think you don't really need it, to be honest. But anyway, um, consoles. So obviously underneath, I've got the original PS3. And you may notice that on the, on the consoles, I've got these flash over here as well. Dust covers by... Um, Printer Boy, uh, a trader on eBay, not eBay, Etsy. So you, whatever console you've got, he's got, he's got most, well just about all of them you can think of, and different colours and all sorts. So I've got a generic Xbox One for that one, but I've got a specialised Xbox One for that one, and PS3, uh, Wii, next to a PS4, and uh, PS3 again, slim. And an Xbox One slim black generic case too as well. Um, so this is all like my modern setup. Um, the Xbox 360, that one is modded with loads of games on. I showed it on a previous video ages ago. The PS3 is modded again with loads of games on. But it's good for playing, uh, well, both the PS3 and the Xbox 360. You can, you can download and install all your uh, imports on those. So they're good to play those, including the PS1s and PS2 games and Xbox 360, all the imports are Japanese games and American, so it's quite good for that. Um, yeah, I've got my PS4 original and modded Wii, which again has lots of games downloaded on. Uh, like I said, probably original PS3, a fat one, that's got a larger 500 gig hard drive on it. And the Xbox One and Halo Edition, oh there's a Wii down there, I've got that, I'm oh, not a Wii, um, what is a Wii? Just there, you can see next to it, next to the the switch and again in the printer boy case it's a Wii, Wii U, well I mean and uh, for switch okay and the Xbox 360 and uh, so the Wii U getting pad Little Miss Zelda edition okay and next to it I've just got my stereo and a few retro bits alike got a nice decent vinyl player a uh, good Sony tape deck from the early 90s uh, a 5 CDs changer Sony player as well which I got for 20 quid last year which is a really good working condition again from the mid 90s I've got a modern Sony stereo there which they are all connected up to anyway but um, yeah I'm a bit of a retro boy really um, yeah it's pop figures and CDs usual stuff okay uh, just show you a bit of a turn around in the room Yes, it is a quite a uh, <laughs> um, com it's not compact lounge, it's just got a lot of toot in it. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a bookcase with those of books my, and my wife's baby boo collection. A few collectibles, we got the God of War collector set, which is excellent. Uh, a lot of my uh, DVDs and Blu rays. And, uh, here, got some statues with some uh, holding some of the controllers. Uh, some of these light up PDP 8 bit inspired counters. Oh, here's my little uh, shrine to alien movies. I mean, obviously, not that. That's, uh, that's a Disney Infinity Marvel set with Star Wars figures on. The reason why I got my Star Wars figures here is because obviously they got a lightsaber, so they were packed away in boxes. They could easily get damaged. Uh, so yeah, so Aliens, big fan of Alien movies. Uh, that is a replica motion sensor, motion tracker, with working LEDs. Very nice. It's very old, though. And a uh, bit of Alien collectibles, and a few Star Wars bits thrown in here for good measure too. But yeah, a few alien collectibles. 
Right, that's the game room, but before I go in there, uh, the other gaming setup that you need to be aware of is in these um, tall cases here. I've got this PS2 game, so it's overspelled for PS2 games, uh, UMD movies. Uh, I think there's more UMD movies there. And some various handhelds there. Here again is overspilled for PS2. Uh, it's PS2s. There's a couple of spare replica Saturn games there I've got for trade. Yeah, it's PS2 overspill. More potential overspill for PS2. Uh, loads of PS2 here, PS2. They all, these other ones all fall with, to a brim with PS2. And handy enough, I've got all my um, more rare PS2 games in these boxes too. So if I need to, when I want, when I want to get around to playing them, they are there as well as being on my modded PS3. Uh, yeah, kitchen, not much to say about that. And my sound collection, I won't spend much time on this. I've shown this in a previous dedicated video. Yeah, all my Saturn games, and down towards the bottom, my um, Mega CD games, or Sega CD. Uh, I've just got my two new Sega Hat Saturn Bluetooth controllers for my well, Japanese um, clear one, and the blue one that's behind it as well. But yeah, all the Saturn games, those of Japanese imports too, and and about 25% of these games are actually um, reproductions. Um, if you collect the Japanese Sega seat, um, Sega Saturn, you'll understand why you probably have to get a quarter of them as reproductions because they're simply too expensive. Okay, let's go through now into the game room. Now, it's taken me a while to set this up, and for those who've been waiting a long time for it, I appreciate your patience. But I had to order some furniture. See these white bookcases from uh, IKEA? The old tall Billy ones. Yeah, I had to order those, and because of the sheer quantity I needed, which was about. Uh, was about. How many bookcases? There's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five large bookcases and end cases and extensions and everything. In all, the furniture cost me about £400, so I needed to um, wait until I got my January bonus for that, which I did. Uh, I wasn't going to get this furniture in, in the dark veneer, actually. I paid for it, ordered it online from Ikea even though it cost me about twice as much as this does. But to cut the long story short, Ikea cocked up a delivery. And uh, this is the second time they cocked up, to be perfectly honest, because I had ordered some furniture for my daughter's bedroom, year, well, years back. And uh, they made a cock up with that. And when I got on the phone to complain, blah, 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 they said that they will need two dates for re-delivery because some of the furniture would be damaged anyway. So I wasn't pleased with that, so I cancelled the order, went to my local IKEA store, which is literally only around the corner from me, in my wife's car, and between the two of us, we did a few trips, tied a boot down, and got the furniture home. Exhausting, um, took me back nearly two days to put this furniture together, and uh, yeah, pretty exhausting, but I think it's well worth it. So let's talk about what I'm showing here. Okay, so first of all, in this corner, I've got uh, some metal shelves, which has got various handhelds and um, some of my import consoles, like my American uh, N64 and Wii and and uh, PS3 and stuff and, and bags and stuff for access if I need to. Plus some various controllers and other sorts. And some collector's edition box sets on the top. Over here on the top shelf, I've got uh, all my box handhelds. So at the front, you can see all the Game Boy Advance and Wonder Swan. A uh, nice little Neo Geo Color Pocket. A little Game Boy Micro Boxed, which is very hard to get hold of these days. PSPs and PSP TVs and, and various. Uh, Switch mini 
various Pokemon consoles, there's all sorts of little handhelds that are up there. On the top, you can just about make out, and there's a little Homer Simpson and Zelda, not Zelda, little one link from Zelda figure, Mario, and the little Donkey Kong uh, display thing. But anyway, this is a great game. So, what games have we got here? Uh, out front, I've got my, um, at the very front of these uh, shelves, I've not only got my most valuable games on display, some of them are valuable, some of them, they're mostly my favourites more than anything else. Games I really enjoy to play. Um, so I've got some of my most valuable games and also ones that I enjoy to play. And a few of these, like this Demolition Man, I do confess, it does state so on the back as well. So I've put these stickers on there deliberately. They are reproductions, just because the originals are too expensive in my mind, especially for Master, well, I mean Master Systems and Genesis Mega Drive games. I begrudge paying more than 40 quid for a Mega Drive game, to be perfectly honest. And so, but most of these I managed to get out cheap in the day anyway. So Cotton, that's a reproduction. Moosh is a reproduction. Insector X, that's a reproduction, even though it's not too expensive to buy. Um, Solly, that's original. Fire Shop, that's actually a reproduction, even though the, the, the real one's not too expensive. Ghouls and Ghosts Real, Empire of Steel Real, Elemental Master, reproduction. Uh, Golden X, that's real. And uh, Master of Darkness Real. Uh, Contra Hardcore, that's a reproduction. But I would say, on the whole, I mean, I've got a collection of over 7,500 games, no joke. And you'll, you'll believe it when I show you around the game room. And 98% uh, of those games are originals. 99% uh, all complete in the original boxes and manuals. Uh, but a few, very few, are reproductions, simply because originals are way too expensive to get these days. And I'd rather spend the money on other things, really. Uh, especially with Master System and Mega Drive games and so forth. I, I like them, I do like the systems, but I haven't got the nostalgia for them compared to some systems. Uh, these Splatterhouse House games, they're all the original. And that Thunder Force game's original. Uh, but for other Thunder Force games, towards the back there, I don't know if you can just make out, I, I've got some of my Japanese Mega Drive games. Uh, but like I said, there's all Mega Drive games around the back of there. Uh, I will do proper dedicated collection videos to these at some point once I finish the collections. For Mega Drive, there are four more games I want to get, so once I've done got those four, which I'll confess will probably be reproductions again, because of what they are, I will show a video. But you know, in the day, I've got no shame in only a few reproductions, as long as you, you know, you don't pass them off as being something they're not. Okay, um, all right, a nice clear Game Boy there, and uh, a few loose Game Boy carts, which are just a few cheap ones I bought over the years. Uh, my Dreamcast collection at the back there. There are also more Dreamcast games there. And obviously my PS Vita get games at the front. Uh, I've collected, I've finished collecting now for a PS Vita. So I will do a collection video of those at some point. On the very bottom shelf, I've got some of my um, um, arcade sticks that I want to use, and uh, tend to use. So obviously the Dreamcast, a sort of Genex, Sony one, PS1 and 2 one, a Wii one, which you can use, also use with Wii U, and a decent virtual stick for a Sega Saturn, which is one of the best sticks for a Saturn. Underneath there, there is uh, like a, a little Mega Drive gamepad too. And I think there's a Master System one at the back there as, as well. But um, I don't use them that much. <laughs> okay, turn away from there. Oh, that's why I'm here, does have interest. I've got these little lights here dotted around. It will stick on uh, LED color changing light, pack of six, about £15 from Ikea. So I've got two sets of those. So at night time, you get a nice effect. And I will add to, onto this video a little view of the game room at night time. Um, little mini arcades with, you know, we are playable. Those ones, are, these two are playable at the end. This is just a Christmas decoration that is 
just doesn't like the fitness music. There we go, go out to see an AM because it's Space and Greens. Little. Nice little. Bed pools. Okay, here, just a couple of um, Star Wars light up pictures, nothing special. I actually got this one for Fiverr recently off of my IKEA, which is a bit of a good deal. Uh, again, I've got some lights. These are quite good, these lights, actually. Yeah, we're looking at them. They do them on Amazon. They are rechargeable with lithium batteries, and you can have them as motion sensor or just turned on all the time. And uh, they've got lithium batteries, so you just recharge them via USB-C. So they're quite a lot of handy lights to have without having to worry about wires. Um, before I look too much at the furniture, Again, there's a room, you know, it's a back wall, a few pictures, got two collectible plates, and hang on, there's a front door. Yes, where was I? Sorry about that, that was a postman. Um, yeah, uh, Sony PlayStation clock, which I made from a broken PlayStation. Um, fan, a few figurines, a nice, um, Lord of the Rings, um, the statue made by Gentle Giant, sort of, um, cartoon inspired. Also got one with Gandalf and Gimli, but they are up in the loft. No room for them to play downstairs unfortunately. Okay, uh, so this is uh, my retro setup. So I got the nice 22 inch um, Sony uh, Trinotron TV. Fantastic sound and picture. Flat screen, really good uh, for any retro games and especially light gun games. So. Really, you know, that's still the best way to play light gun games, in my opinion. And a lot of the retro games, to be perfectly honest, even though with the new HDMI filters and wires and tubes and everything, I still think games are still looking better on the CRT. Uh, let me know if you agree or not. <laughs> uh, next to it, I've got a nice Sony Bravia LCD TV. This is a um, 24 inch model. Um, it comes, it's got a built-in little DVD player at the back, which is nothing too special, but it's a really nice quality TV. And uh, I wanted a uh, a smaller Sony flat screen TV to go next to this one. And Sony stopped making smaller TVs, smaller than 30 inches really, at uh, the moment. So I had to get uh, a second hand one, which I got, got this one from. It's about £40 from Cash Convert, it's all fully working. In excellent condition, uh, fantastic sound and picture, and so I use that for uh, any of the modern setups. So I got a little Roku satellite box for internet TV. It's got its own little. As a, as a these modern aerials, indoor areas are fantastic. You know, you can get really good pictures on those now. So basically, I got all. The, I can use that as a, a, a TV. Uh, watch YouTube and everything else on. Um, I mean, I've just got my Sony PlayStation Mini co connected to it, but I've also got quite a few other consoles below connected to it, such as my Retro Freak and my um, Retro Pi. Okay, so let's, let's see what else we got. Beneath it, just stored for convenience, is my Hori Switch uh, arcade stick. And I've got some little mini Street Fighter figures in front. Actually, this is out of interest, I've got a 3D moulded Xbox Live figure of myself, that's my um, character, uh, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they call them again. I um, can't remember the, the term that they use for these characters, you know, these, you know, these visual representations of us, I can't remember what the, the word is now. It'll come to me later. But yeah, you, there was a company years back that was, you know, you can get your... Um, Avatar, that's it, the Xbox Avatar, and get it printed off 3D. So, always thought that was cool. Right beneath, again, I've got the old Printer Boy covers, dust covers. So, I've got my fat PS2 there, next to uh, my um, Game Cube with a Game Boy Player underneath. So, it's a special cover that covers the Game Boy Player 2. Little Legend of Zelda uh, light at the back. VCR, one of the best Sony VCRs I made. I bought this from brand new in the day and kept it up in the loft for the past 10 years and got it out uh, end of last year and decided to have it with my games as like a retro collection. Because I've got a few VCR tapes still, which which um, I like to play. It's watching uh, old movies back on the CRT 
with a VCR, it's um, you know, a picture quality. It's, it's it's nostalgic, isn't it? You know, watching tapes on that. I've serviced it myself, cleaned all the heads and everything, blah blah blah. You know, put a lot of um, machine lubricant on the cogs and moving parts and so forth. So hopefully, the machine will keep going for however long. Um, be under no illusion, VHS tapes will not last forever. They will die. Uh, but uh, what can you do apart from I don't know? Go to DVDs, which is probably why I like this little DVD player. I've got a few DVDs too, which I, I most of my movie collection is DVDs. And to be perfectly honest, with most media, there's nothing wrong with DVD. To be perfectly honest, uh, Blu-rays I've got a few extras, but it's not legendary. And sometimes Blu-rays can show imperfections in the originals so if they've not been upgraded properly. Uh, you just watch the Star Trek movies on Blu-ray, and you can see what I mean. They actually look better on DVD because uh, you know they look. You can see all the flaws and the CGI and everything. It's just some. Um, it's like um, dating a beautiful woman who has no makeup on, and you just get a little more close-up on their imperfections, and that's what you're doing. I don't know if that's a good metaphor, but anyway, that would do. Okay, uh, yeah, my modern Neo Geo. Um, um, yeah, modern Neo Geo, it's got the uh, BIOS, UniBIOS on it, so I can do play, you know, play imports and do cheats and everything else. Uh, I've got my Neo Geo Magic Key, so it enables me to ma play the MVS carts on it too. And I've got well, one 161 in one cart, which is a must only if you've got a Neo Geo, unless you're super rich. Um, this is my uh, the old, uh, what do they call these controllers? It came out with a CD system. Um, um, it's uh, a kidney bean control, I think they call it, don't they? This is actually my control of choice for the Neo Geo. I really like it. It feels nice. I actually prefer it to the the clicky um, handheld control, which I do have underneath there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, I do. That's my control of choice. Actually, I prefer it to even to the bigger one. Okay, beneath it, I have my Nintendo 64. A uh, little multi converter at the back as well if I want to play imports on it. Um, and uh, beneath this, I've got my Dreamcast, my Retro Pi, I'm not Retro Pi, my Retro 3. Uh, this is my um, console choice for all the old game console, all old games, um, including Game Boy actually, and Game Boy Color. Uh, it's got all the carts and adapters you can play as. Game Gear games and all the, you know, all the usual suspects. I hope that they will make a cart for the N64, perhaps for it. That'd be nice if they do. Uh, I use the old 8-bit uh, 2 M30 controller with it. You have to. That's the best controller for it. The original controllers that come with it, okay, but that's the best one. Uh, but it enables you to obviously play a game to your own, which I do, and have them installed, save them, getting them out of the boxes. Also play um, ROMs that you just burn yourself on there, and uh, but also only enables safe states, but cheats and uh, I'm a bit of a I don't like games too hard. So sometimes I do have to use cheats. I'm afraid I'll, I'll admit it. Okay, next to Dream Cars, I've got a light gun. Uh, my mod is Sega Saturn. Um, yeah, that's a that's a nice system. On it, I've got a, a few stickers just to remind me of what to press if I want to go from uh, uh, blue power to 50 hertz to red Japanese 60 hertz or purple American 60 hertz. Give me a few options. I've got the carts and stuff behind here. Um, I do have a, a modded action replay cart as well for my Japanese Saturn and other Saturns, but that's a Saturn I tend to use. Uh, beneath here, I have in this sort of nice Xbox case is um, a clear modded soft modded original Xbox very nice system uh, I've got my custom made virtual pie arcade stick here with thousands of games on I've shown that again on the previous video very nice beneath here I have my Atari Jaguar a few VHS tapes a few CD soundtracks at back Again, uh, a few VHS tapes, uh, some Simpsons ones, again, the nostalgia. Also, I have got here a couple of Star Wars DVD sets. These are very good sets, actually. 
if you want to get the original movies bundled with the remakes get these two sets they are if you look for them you can get them cheap i've got them for under 10 pounds each so a prequel trilogy which i'm not too bothered about really to be perfectly honest uh, but more importantly the original trilogy uh, so it's got the un specialized versions of the movies on dvd uh, I do have them in separate DVD cases as well, which are up in the loft somewhere, and also a nice special sealed tin edition of those game of those movies. But I didn't want to open these those, so I got these just to show uh, for me to watch them on my TV. Uh, I do have them on Blu-ray, I admit, but sometimes you know you you know if you want to watch them in your game room, I've got a means to. Beneath here. I do actually have some more Simpson tapes, but also got a, a very collectible VHS box set of, of original Star Wars movies, all widescreen. Uh, again, despecialized. Got that cheap, much about twelve pounds actually, all complete with all the cards and everything. Uh, yeah. So that is my hardware setup, or anything else really. Okay. Uh, I forgot to mention actually next to it I've got these two scarf boxes. Um I can't remember the make of them actually. There's a German make. But they're one of the best manufacturers of scarf boxes. They're like a five in one scarf for each of them, so I've got them daisy chained together. So basically uh I can play nine retro consoles connected to my TV via a scarf. The PS2 I've got connected to a the RGB scarf straight into a telly anyway. Uh, because I've got a special lead for that because uh, some of these SCART boxes, uh, extension boxes if you've got like a specialist lead that transfer I think is it C-Link, Luna, what they call it, signals uh, they, they don't actually transfer them unfortunately so you need to have a direct SCART into your telly but these boxes are fine for all my other consoles so Basically, all these consoles, apart from the ones I've mentioned earlier, are connected via the, the, the TV via that SCART. You know, it's got a few labels to code to let me know how to have the inputs all set up on them. Very nice boxes. Um, it's very hard to come across new SCART boxes these days. I bought these about 10 years ago, brand new from Germany, about 30 quid each. So, if you see any um, SCART extension boxes on your travels, guys, and they're good make ones, do pick them up because. I think they'll become more valuable and harder to come by in the future. Okay, um, okay, talk a little bit. I forgot to mention I've got the Darth Vader and Gears of War Judgment standees. Uh, bits of candy. At the back here, I'll show you a bit better. All these games here, on this corner, are all my original Xbox collection, including a few American imports and a few Japanese imports. Very few around the top three row, top two rows are Xbox 360 games going across, and at the very top, overflow of PS2 games are going on the top. Okay, and on the top here, I do have a few the Totaki figures which I bought when they became cheap, and a couple of me amiibos boxed, but mostly Totaki figures. Down here, I have my Matrix. Shrine, except for that Call of Duty figure there. Uh, yeah, I do like Matrix movie. Uh, there's a bit of a Master Chief sneaked in there with a Switch controller, but most of these are Matrix goodies, box sets, and UMDs, and other bits. Uh, yeah, the old obligatory washing machine. <laughs> uh, I think how many game rooms I've got come uh, domestic goods in. Probably a few I've mentioned because he's got. We have not all rich, are we? And who's up there? As our cat Poppy. We've got three cats, and that's one of them. She is a climber. She will get up there, no matter how small the gaps are. She'll find a way, and uh, she's well climber. She is. So hello, Poppy. Anyway, right, well, let's go back to this corner while we're here. Yeah, I've got a few collector sets. I'm not going to talk too much about all the collector sets. I'll be here forever. Uh, a box that has, um, again, I think it's got some, um, some uh, yeah, it's got some of my plug and play 
accessories and bits and bobs in there, and they're exciting. Uh, this goes back again about, it's about, I don't know, about five columns across and about five columns deep, and it consists of my original Xbox games, again, over the PS2 at the top, and along all this back wall across there, and all the way across to the corner of a room, well, first of all, across that back wall is just like this, five by five, well at least well, a bit wider but wide, it's probably about um, ten columns long, but five high. On the top, PS2, and underneath are various games, like my GameCube, my Wii U, uh, my DS, um, some PC Engine games. Uh, and all my um, Nintendo handheld games, most of them, um, in terms of the DS, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and original Game Boy games, all along the box back, all boxed and complete, covered with this um, this um, pink curtain, and that is just to stop protect them from UV damage. Because I am in a conservatory, this room. They also got the little bag. They've got baggies on them as well, which again helps. Protect the games, conserve them from damage from moisture and UV and dust and bugs and rubbish like that, really. Okay, uh, down this column. Okay, first of all, I've got to just move these. These two laundry beans obviously go out of the way. I can move them out of the way. These are a bag of um, games which I've got to show and pick up videos at some point. These are games I've picked up for the past few months which I've not shown. Underneath, I've got a couple of baggies of soft toys. You can see one of them there. But basically, I can easily move all that stuff quickly out of the way. So I can get down here and get to my games. And uh, basically, up here, see those four rows? They're all my PSP games, and they go back double. So it's not just ones you see at the front, there's a double thickness, really. So. PSP games, Wii U box sets, and underneath those, I've got a few um, on the bottom shelf, the bottom shelf, I've got a few um, folders that contain um, some magazine cutouts and stuff. Our top shelf, I'm not sure you can make it see it, a few more um, collectibles, arcade sticks, and NES advantage, and headphones, and all sorts of things. Here I've got some of my folders that contain my retro gamer magazines. I've been going, collecting retro gamer in the house for well, probably about ten years. Um, I don't keep every single magazine. If there's no articles of interest in the magazine, I just give them away or trade them. So these folders are, are ones that contain the magazines I actually want to keep. Because simply put, there's no point keeping magazines if you're not interested in them. Because they just take up room. Okay, in this corner. Again, I've got, you see these metal shelves, about, I don't know, they're about one, two, three, four, I've got five shelves in each, five, um, yeah, in, in each case, five of them, and there's four of them going back, there's a couple of bitty um, square bookcases in the corner as well that have got strategy guides in, but this is basically all full with um, various um, hardware really, um, hand, uh, accessories, a few, you know, some limited edition box sets. Down here below, I've got some storage boxes which I like. Overflow for Nintendo DS and 3DS games, so all my 3DS and Nintendo games are in there. Again, overflow for Wii games are in there too. But yeah, uh, so there are quite a few games back there. Along the back, that very back wall, which I told you on there, at the very top, it goes down one, one shelf down, are two rows of PlayStation games as well, my PS2 games, go on the back. So when I say I've got about 800 PS2 games, that's where the picture of them are. But they're more of the games that are not, you know, aren't so expensive, and more expensive ones, like I said, are in the lounge. Uh, again, be nice if I had a you know a game room twice the size of this, so I can access things easier. But at the end of the day, you you deal with what you got. 
Okay, going back to here again, I've got uh, going down here is all my PS4 games, collection all the way down. And here as well on the end here, the PS4 games. And again, these are all double back. So, um, I haven't counted my PS4 games, but I must have at least 600 I would have thought PS4 games. With another 200 games on my want list. So yeah, uh, there's a nice little Xbox light up there. At the top, uh, a few other re retro bits. I've got a nice CD tech deck, stereo player, Sony. Uh, a little um, Nerf gun there. At the top, another PlayStation light with a little Corsair figure and a couple of uh, Batman and Luke Skywalker meerkats. Okay, so let's talk about this uh, this setup here. Let's go down a bit. Here's my game chair, brand new, um, nice PlayStation game chair that has, you know, usual X Rocker one with speakers and rumble features and everything in it. Really comfortable. Um, got that. I think that was about last October time. No, Poppy, you're not going outside. That goes through into our garden. And so yeah, you can see what levels I've taken to protect both games. I've got um, nice net curtains here to protect from UV. When I had this built, this conservatory, I made sure I had a white roof, not a clear roof. Again, protect from UV. Uh, these shelves along the top, there's no protection from UV, but it's, the room itself is quite relatively insulated in that respect. Uh, so along the top of here, I've got, uh, you know, satin uh, steering stick. N gauge, the box for the Neo Geo Controller Pro, a few GameCube boxes there. Some nice collectible Star Wars bits. Uh, these are the uh, talking Star Wars large scale figures that Disney brought out a few years back. I actually got all of those, all six of these figures, off a of, sale on eBay. He was selling his son's collection because he stopped playing with them and he literally looked after them. Got them £30 delivered so that's a steal because they were about I think they were about 20 pounds each when they're brand new at least anyway so to get um, you know 120 pound worth of figures for 30 quid is always a good deal there's a few other little Star Wars, Star Wars bits underneath uh, sort of cartoony like kids figures plus a original vintage Boba Fett figure there on the top here I've got a few more overflow bits for like my Sega Game Gear and the Gamecom, uh, yeah, it's not the Otago Gamecom, a little bit of a notorious system. Oh, bits, bobs. Going down to the shelf is all my PS3 games, all the way down to the bottom. And again, these go double back, and these go further deep down the, the back, they do, which I can access by pulling all these out. And so, because it's my PS3 games, uh, these ones are unlikely to play, but I can easily get to ones as and when I want to when I've got time to. But at the minute, I'm focusing on the PS4 games in terms of playing more than anything else, really. Uh, apart from when I want to go on the retro. And if I do retro, I'll probably be sad, to be honest. But around here as well, I've got a few more shelves with collectibles. Let me just show you. So I've got Mario and a South Park figure. Let's put this back here. Uh, gorillas, uh, Dead or Alive, little collectible figures, beach volleyball figures, Master Chief, uh, Game Boy Light. Uh, again, a few cartoony type key figures. And these, these four shelves are, will become overflow space for my PS4 when I need it. Uh, below that, I've got my Japanese PS1 games. And at the front, again, I've got on nice little displayable stands my um ps1 my favorite ps1 games and some of my most valuable ones so these little um these little plastic stands here uh just the little stand itself not the case but the stand i got about 100 of those for about 50 quid um uh, so it's a nice way of displaying some of the more valuable games and keeping the stand up right um uh, but this uh game the adventure of a little ralph on a japanese ps1 very good little platforming type adventure game, very collectible and very expensive. Next down I've got Police Noughts. Below I've got my, uh, so my uh, shelf for my American PS1 game, not too many PS1 games, American ones. Um, uh, front I've got Elemental Gearbox and Vampire Saviors next to it. 
again again my UK PAL PS1 games Sewer Code in 1 and 2 and down the bottom um, proper wrapper and Unjammer Lammy and games behind it now you may be asking again why have I got this these stream fly screens in front of them um, again it's UV protection and behind these all these shelves going down here one two three four five six seven eight these shelves all going back with these PS1 games all going through into a corner I need to protect these don't I from UV light UV damage so this this screen here is to help protect these games enable me to have them on display but also protect them from UV light so again I've just gone through you can see the games as they go past I'll just move out actually made by light force that's an interesting game that was a dirt cheap game a bit first um, shooter uh, I think it's published by or developed by Psycho. Um, was five pound on PS One years back, but now looking at least forty quid for that one. Anyway, so there's. I don't know how many PS One games I've got to be perfectly honest. Uh, I haven't counted yet. Um, I am still collecting for PS One. There's about forty games left on my want list, and I am making a conscious effort to get those picked up this year actually, because they are going up in price PS1 it's like the Saturn did you know first of all Saturn became useless I mean worthless and they slowly crept up in price and become very expensive as they are now that is happening with the PlayStation guys so don't put off uh, sorry for that interruption guys um uh ran out of battery um I forgot to check the battery level before I start recording, so that wasn't very sensible. Anyway, I was saying that the PlayStation games are going up a lot in price, so if you want to collect them, guys, don't put it off. Uh, they're becoming expensive, like certain games. Okay, let's look, talk through the games I've got here. Out of front, again, I've got my favourite NES games, as in the more, more valuable ones. Uh, at the back of the ones on display are all my NES games going on the, the shelves. So, uh, DuckTales, all the Castlevania games, um, Gargoyles, uh, Crest, Godzilla 2 with a specialist plastic case, uh, some more Famicom games, so Kid Dracula, Final Fight, they're in special cases I, I have made, uh, original carts but special cases, and Gone Home, um, yeah, um, the game that inspired Resident Evil. Uh, beneath these I have my SNES games, again, my more interesting uh, collectible games at the front. Earthbound, that is a special original demo box with a um, special um, repo cart built inside that has contains the English, tra found tra English translation of the Japanese version of Earthbound or Mother 2. Uh, next to that I've got Demon's Crest, that is a reproduction. Um, Vampire's Kiss, that's a reproduction, but Super Castlevania 4, that's real, and most of these other games, well actually all these other games are real. Um, so I've got, I've got a few SNES replicas, again just will get games that are a bit too pricey. Um, yeah, go down there, uh, the old, got some my Japanese Super Famicom games, Mother 2, uh, Muscle Muscle Bomber, even if you see it back there. Uh, Endless Duel, Gundam Wing Endless Duel, fantastic game. Lion at Walls, or Star Fox. And beneath that, N64. Wignall Conquers Bad Third Day, Australian copy. Paper Mario, Pokemon Stadium. Castlevania, Legend of Darkness, I think that, no, Legacy of Darkness. That is just a reproduction box. It does have the original cart in it though. And uh, the other Castlevania game on the N64 in the corner. And beneath this here I've got my Japanese um, Sins and Punishment N64 games. Uh, and other Japanese N64 games. Uh, Nintendo, uh, Star Wars Nintendo 64. 
And on the very bottom shelf, I've got my Switch games, Nintendo Switch, uh, my free Jaguar games I've got, Aliens vs Predator all complete, Doom all complete, and Wolfenstein all complete. Plus uh, a Spider-Man reproduction, a sort of a, a European edition, so you can play it on a European 32X of the Spider-Man Web of Fire, is it called? Um, yeah, so it's a very, uh, one of the last 32X games to come out. Very pricey, even an American copy is very pricey, but, but to play it on a power machine you do need to have a special um, sort of power version of it, which is what I've got there, all boxed and complete with a manual and everything. Nice little bit of production. And that's it really guys, that's my uh, game room set, set up really. So I've got all the, like I said I've got rows of the games behind the ones that are on display. A few little collectible little toys like Nintendo toys, Happy Meal toys and things in front. And uh, my game room. Uh, chair. So that's pretty much it guys. So what I'll do is, at the end of this video I'll show you a view of a game room at night with all the lights on and stuff they look quite cool i forgot to mention this boba fett light uh yeah quite cool isn't it uh it's sort of lights on you can put them you can put a light on and the screen goes up bed and the thing goes up light there it's one timer comes with a little transfer sticker so it looks like it's coming through the bookcase not bad it's 18 quid it's a full-size replica Helmet, so it's really cool, it's quite cheap for what it is, really. Very nice. Um, yeah, um, a few CDs on a, again for my retro players. <laughs> you know, I know, is it? I have, I do have iPods and MP3s and stuff, but I still like to have a few original CDs too. Uh, yeah, so that's my setup. It's Poppy again wanting to go outside. Now you're not going outside, you naughty cat. Okay, guys. We'll jump to a clip and I'll catch you later. Here we are, game room. Oh, okay, the lights on. During the night time. Little cockpit. Gaming chair, lights. Some TVs, retro consoles, all nicely lit. So this is what I see when I play. Um, or watch TV, or the more modern concert games on the Retro Freak or the Retro Pi everything else pretty much goes to the Sony CRT above the PlayStation Mini Obviously, you would have seen this in the daytime in the previous main clip. That's my Matrix little collection. Those games and the side passage for access. To the library at night time, should it be needed. A little Xbox light up there. There's a PlayStation light.
So that's the game then.